welcome to Roland's Travels. It's Roland here, who else could it be? And we're in the lovely market town and very historic market town of Bradford on Avon. I do make videos quite a bit here and uh, there'll be many more to come. So look out as I release footage of various parts of Bradford on Avon and I'll link some of them in the description below. Now Bradford on Avon has so much history that you can't really cover it in one video. It would take many hours. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to cover one street at a time. So this is the first one in this series of Bradford on Avon, one street at a time. And we're looking at Silver Street, which is just to the left of the bridge over there, starting with the big building that you can see. I'm going to tell you all about that street, some of the houses in there. So do stay tuned, watch to the end. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please do hit that subscribe button before you go. And if you'd like to give us a thumbs up, well, that's even appreciated too. So thank you. And uh, I hope you enjoy this look at Silver Street, Bradford on Avon. Now this is going to be noisy when I get onto the main road and then Silver Street. So I will voice over this video in the main and explain about the buildings to you. The first one here is a new shopping center. The Lamin Yard. The building you see there was built on the site of the Lamin. It was part of the what became the Avon Rubber Company. And uh, all on this was a big factory site. And on this factory site, rubber goods were made. I'm not sure exactly which ones they made here, but they would do things like uh, make uh, tires at Melksham. And they made golf grips. That's the handles that fit on the end of your golf clubs that professionals like to change regularly. Gas masks and all kinds of things. There is a photograph of 1979 when the water level here was just under that, uh, under those windows there, those uh, five windows you see on the side, the water level was right up to the uh, sill of those. So let's cross the bridge. At the end of the bridge is Ward's Corner. It's been called that because at number one there was a station at Atkinson Ward that occupied that particular property. His wife was Rebecca Ward. She was a writer and used the pseudonym Faye Inchfor. We'll just pop into Bridge Yard and let you take a look at that. This is the new development on what was the Avon Rubber factory site. So you can see it's a nice development with shops has an area that sometimes little market stalls are placed outside of that for special events as well. And there is a supermarket just coming up there which is on the end of the main road. So I'm back on Silver Street now for you by the mini roundabout. This area is known as Knee's Corner because Knee's department store stood there. Uh, the front bit was knocked down to make room for traffic vision but as you can see the rest of the building remains along the end there. Let's take a look at this pair of buildings. Now these are 36 and 37 Silver Street, 37 being the one furthest away. From 1867 to 1988 it had been constantly used as a butcher shop, the last butchery being the cooperative. The shop on the left, 36, was a drapery shop for much of its life in the 19th century. The whole building might have been the Queen Victoria Public House. You can see it was one building at one time before becoming two shops. take a look at number 33 at Silver Street. This used to be a Georgian house. In 1931 it became a cooperative store and closed in 1988 at the same time as the butchers. It was once the home of Francis Hislop, a draper between 1749 and 1769. In 1791 it became the grocery store of James Budget and by the end of the 19th century it had become Edwards Pork Butcher Shop which closed in 1931 when the co-op took possession property in the centre of your screen, number 32, is yet another Georgian house. You can see that as you look above the shop facade. It faces the old marketplace and it's been a shop since at least the middle of the 19th century. It was once the shop of Josiah Rogers, a fruiterer, greengrocer and seedsman. We 
now taking a look at the former King's Arms. It's a shop now, but it had been a pub until recent times. The actual building includes the remains of a 17th century house, and it was the centre of Bradford and Avon's marketplace. Market days must have been very good for business. It has been called the King's Arms since 1809, and for a while in the 1990s it had one of those trendy names when it became a gastropub. They called it the Sprat and Carrot. This was followed by the King's Spice when it was an Indian restaurant. Prior to 1809, it was known as the George, the Boot and the New White Heart. This is number 6 Silver Street. It's a rare red brick building for Bradford Navin because most of the properties use local stone. This though age-wise is a newer building for the town constructed towards the end of the 19th century. As you can tell from the photo it was originally built as a row of shops. This was for Harding's Brewery Shop and the brewery was behind it. In 1936 T.W. Cooper's Grocery, that's called International Stores at the time, took over the building and although they have long gone it's good to see that businesses are still using it today. The 7 Silver Street, this has got a long history in drapery and clothing. In 1822 records show that John Alford, a linen draper, was operating here. It was bought in 1876 by a silk mercer and undertaker, William Rogers. That's quite a combination of occupations, isn't it? At some point during the 1890s, John F. Goodall purchased it and established his business, which included number eight next door. He did stay at a department store for quite a few years, and pro probably 20 years ago, something like that. Now, looking opposite the road, we see number 30, J. Alex Brown, and next door 31. Now these are very interesting buildings as well. Number 31 with all that glass frontage was actually an extension of J. Alex Brown's business built in the late 19th century. Today it's a charity shop and previously has been the C&G or Cheltenham Gloucester Build Society. In the late 1800s it was a grocer's owned by James Gore who also owned a business across the road at number 11 which we'll come to shortly. But J. Alex Brown of number 30 was opened in 1853. It has had several owners in the interim years. Started as an ironmonger and his son continued the business until 1937. I believe until very recently when I filmed this it was still being used under that trade name but I believe the shop has recently been vacated um, but, which is rather sad to see but it has been used as a ironmongers and gardening equipment that kind of thing until very recent times. Let's take a look at our next one that's number 29 now this is currently Davies and Davies estate agents but for many years it was a chemist shop in fact from the year 1863 when Thomas Prido Saunders established a chemist here. It continued trading with different owners until Richard Thorne and Christopher took over in 1908 and he continued serving there until he died in 1962, a good long stint. His daughter Angela continued the business until she retired in 1986. The family had a great interest in history, particularly that of pharmacy, and they collected many artefacts which have been donated to the Bradford and Avon Museum and are now on display in a recreated chemist shop. Now the museum's just above the library, so go and take a look at that. It's free, it's on the first floor whenever you get the opportunity. Next door at number 28 is also an estate agent's, currently covered by scaffolding when I was filming. But if you take a close look at the front of the building, there's the outline of a sign, Printing Office, one of those lovely old ghost signs. Printers have worked here since the very early part of the 19th century. A company named Stump and Bub were trading in 1822. John Bub, the trade station of printer, engraver and jeweller, was trading here under his name from 1832, possibly earlier. He died aged 71 in 1860. In his will he bequeathed funds for the rebuilding of St Catherine Armhouses on Froome Road. Records show that the next printer to continue in this building was Mr John Stephen Day, trading as J.S. Day. When Day retired, George Farrington, Farrington I should say, continued the business and was known for printing local directories. Farrington remained at number 28 until 1887. And then the year 1893 saw a new printer, 
a man who made this a much larger business, William Charles de Ticio. He was not only a general printer, but a bookbinder and maker of business ledgers, something in demand before the age of computers. The business was called de Ticio and Todd. He expanded the business, firstly into larger premises higher up Silver Street. He also had, around the year 1900, a printing works on Froome Road in Bradford and Avon. He then expanded the business into what was the then empty wooden mills, Greenham Mills. The business was also trading in Lowestoft and Suffolk. Later it moved to Trowbridge and closed in the 1990s. As we pass the Chinatown takeaway, we come to the Old Bear Inn. A pub has been listed here as far back as 1726. The present frontage is a little bit newer when Silver Street was widened. Opposite the old pub we can now see number 9 Silver Street. That includes a very narrow building and was previously Pike's Butcher Shop. It has been in the past an ice cream parlour, also an old sweet shop, uh, both now closed. The narrow building itself was once Ernie Sad's barber shop and we have seen a number of these houses on Silver Street as you walk up you'll see this kind of common narrow house for the period. This is number 10 Silver Street, Canterbury House, so called because it was a shop of a butcher selling New Zealand lamb. It opened in 1830 and it remained a butcher shop until recent times. It's now Dream Doors. Next door we have number 11, a Georgian building. It has Victorian sash windows on the ground floor. Interestingly, the right-hand side of the building dates from the 15th century and this has a medieval timber roof. Originally it would have been two houses from the medieval period. In 1841 it was owned by the brewers George, Thomas and John Spencer. They ran the brewery behind Silver Street House when it was the New Bear Hotel. For a long time it was a grocer, baker and dairy shop. And a quick review of the shop's use. In 1871 it was operated by James Gore, a baker. By 1903 records show that the shop was owned by James Stevens. And in 1911 the name was changed to Silver Street Dairy. 1915 saw the arrival of Ernest Williams and his tenure continued until one called A. Sevier in the 1930s ran the business. During the 1950s and 60s an M. H. Thomas took over the running of the Silver Street Dairy. The name was changed in the 1970s to The Dairy and until the 1980s was under the care of Bill and Francis Taylor. This building has a very long history of providing for the needs of the people of Bradford on Avon. Let's look across the road and we'll take a view at the Ale and Porter. This was erected in 1884. It was a store for the brewers George and Thomas Spencer. Locals often refer to this as the Armoury as it once served as the headquarters and armoury of the Army Volunteer Force. It has been used as a storehouse in the past for Avon rubber but it's currently a beauty salon having had some prior use as a restaurant. Going up the hill, the left-hand side of Silver Street ends before the right-hand side. And here on the left-hand side going up the hill is the Bunch of Grapes. In 1762 it was described as newly built. How many newly built properties a day will last this long? It was once the shop of a chemist, William Harris. It then became a wine merchant known or owned by tailors of the vaults across the road and it was already known as the Bunch of Grapes in 1846 when the tailors purchased it. It remained a wine merchant until the 1930s when it became a public house and retained that very name. Now next door to the Bunch of Grapes is Silver Street House. It has an 18th century facade but its origins go much further back in time. The core of the building dates back to the 16th century. Silver Street House was once the Angel Inn and then the New Bear Hotel. The hotel closed in 1958 and was in need of rescue. 
Its salvation came in 1974 when the Bradford and Avon Preservation Trust purchased it and converted it into the six flats which are occupied today. Looking back across the road now we have the final houses on the right hand side going up out of Bradford on Avon and notice that another narrow house there. That has a date on the top which reads 1718. It probably was the last of the style to be built in that era because that was a medieval design. The old house is the last on the side of Silver Street. It was briefly the new inn in the early 18th century and a Georgian facade was added in the latter part of that century. At one point a relative of Taylor's at the vaults, Edward Taylor, had a rope, twine and canvas business at the old house. He also had another part of the business at Rope Walk in Newtown, Bradford Haven. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of Silver Street in Bradford and Avon. It's been enjoyable for me. It's taken me a little while to get this one edited. I've had it in the camera for a little while. But I thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so. It costs you absolutely nothing. And it just helps me to promote the channel to other people. I've got more videos to come, so do stay tuned. And uh, if you click the notification bell, you'll be advised when those videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care and bye for now.